guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Dulce the Tempest, welcome. If you are returning, hey boo hey. Okay, so today as I get dressed, we're gonna talk about a topic that may sound a little complicated, but I promise I'll break it down in a simple and relatable way. We're gonna talk about endocrine disruptions, what it means for your hormones and how it's linked to the growth of fibroids. So if you're someone who's curious about your health or dealing with fibroids, stick with me, I got you covered. Okay, so let's start with the basics. So you probably already heard about hormones, right? I mean, cause we talked about a little bit here. They're like little messengers in our body, controlling our mood, our sleep, our metabolism, and most importantly, for this conversation, our reproductive system. Now, the system that manages all these hormones is called an endocrine system. Think of, think of this like a control center that keeps the body hormones in balance. When everything is running smoothly, your body knows exactly how much hormones to make and everything feels balanced. But sometimes there are certain chemicals that can mess with that balance. That's when we have this endocrine disruption. So endocrine disruptors are chemicals that can interfere with the way your hormones work. So these disruptors can be found in everyday products. Mm, you guys probably hear me from time to time speaking about this. If not, here are a couple examples of what I mean by the disruptors in everyday products. So the examples are like plastic, cosmetics, pesticides, and even some food. Those are a couple of examples. So these disruptors, they mimic or block natural hormones, causing the body to either produce too much or cause too little of a certain hormone. Kind of like someone messing with the settings of the control panel. Okay, so here's the connection when it comes to fibroids. Fibroids are non-cancerous growth that develop in or around the uterus. We all know that, right? And while we don't know exactly why this happens, we do know that there's highly sensitive hormones, especially estrogen and progesterone tone. These are the two main hormones that can regulate your menstrual cycle. So if you aren't aware, when you have too much estrogen in your body, it can fuel the growth of your fibroids, making them larger and more problematic. So too much estrogen in the body, it's bad for the fibroids, okay? So when you have too much estrogen in the body, it makes the growth of the fibroids get larger and more problematic. Hmm. And guess what? Endocrine disruptors often mimic estrogen tricking your body into thinking that it produced more of it. So everyday chemicals like plastic, personal care items, and even pesticides can disrupt the balance of your hormone. Over time, the imbalance of the hormones affects the growth of the fibroid. Get it? So when your hormones are out of balance, especially with excessive estrogen, it creates the perfect environment for fibroids to grow. Even this is why so many women with fibroids notice symptoms um, get worse during times when estrogen is like naturally high, like during their pregnancy or when they're taking certain hormone based medications, stuff like that. On top of that, fibroids can cause more hormones imbalance by disrupting your menstrual cycle. And for most of us, that's kind of where we like, okay, what is going on here? We know that's a problem. So this is leading to a bit of a vicious cycle. So hormone imbalance fuels fibroid growth. And fibroids themselves can throw your hormones even more off way. So what can we do about it? Well, there are ways to reduce your exposure to the endocrine disruptors. You can opt for natural products, which has few chemicals. You can avoid plastic containers, especially those with food. And 
be mindful that what's in your beauty products that you use as well. So your face, your body products, okay, stuff that you wash your body with, you put on your face through your skincare, um, all of all of those things. But also it's important to talk to your healthcare provider if you suspect fibroids or any other hormone disruptors or imbalance. So I hope this helped you understand the connection between endocrine disruptors and fibroid growth. It's all about keeping your hormones balanced and being mindful of what may be throwing them off. Remember, your body is always communicating with you. So listen and take small steps towards a better health. A quick bonus. Hi. Okay. So I want to share with you guys a couple of my favorite or go-to beauty items that I use to eliminate the endocrine disruptors. Okay. So when we're talking about body, let's go body first. Two of, two of the brands that I really enjoy, Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's have a good collection of items. Here is a body scrub, natural, that you can use. And there's so many other brands. Here's just a couple that I'm just sharing with you that I have on hand right now. Public Wash. Public Wash is sulfate free. It's a good body wash. It does not leave my skin dry at all. When it comes to skin, for skincare, here's one line that I like. Acure, Acure is one of those brands that are going to be more organic and have less bad ingredients for you, as well as another brand called verse verse is a, another brand that uh prides itself on natural ingredients then when you come to makeup here are two of the brands that not only are a well quality but their uh their products just are so long lasting here's one brand lys here's another one that you probably did not know house labs thank you so much for watching until the next time, take care. Bye.